Meet Kobe, an 11 month old white German Shepherd. Clever oh, boy. Clever boy. Who's the apple of his owner's eye. Maybe I'm biased, he's very intelligent. He is a very intelligent. I'm glad he's got that from me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's just great to have around. I cannot imagine life without him. He's been amazing. But recently, that dream's become a nightmare as Kobe has taken on the role of doorman, deciding who can come in. So I am so sorry. I think I'll make a move because he's a little bit you don't like aggressive him? for me. People feel very intimidated when they walk in the door. The fear on people's faces, it's horrible. Sorry, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Kobe's aggressive door policy has been driving friends and family from their home. Hi, Brandon. It's enough. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm this sorry. Is I'm sorry. Just don't smile. Kobe. <laughs> She's gone and got this dog, and he's just an absolute feral animal. He needs taming. Hello, Dawn. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're not very nice, are you? He must scare the life out of people. <laughs> Dawn's tone of voice is all over the joint. Um, she's not really telling him off. Now, I don't want her to shout, but she just sounds like, come on, Kobe, no, no, no. Uh, there's nothing about that that's telling him what he's doing is wrong. On the contrary, it actually sounds delightful. The first problem they've got is they just can't get anybody into the house through the hallway. So I'm going to show them a technique that gets Kobe into the living room at the side so that they can get, bring somebody in, and then they can introduce them on their terms. So the point is here that if we can get a guest into the house and then introduce Kobe to them, he's going to be a bit calmer. To help break Kobe's guarding habit, first Graham is going to sweeten the deal with ham. What I'm doing is the simplest bit of training in the world, in a sense. If I get a treat and he's interested in it and I throw it in the room, he's going to follow, isn't he? In. So as he's travelling in, he's hearing the soundtrack in. So he's beginning to associate that. Hang on a minute, if I hear that word... But I'm actually creating a hand signal here that means go into the room, OK? Now, eventually, we can take the treats out of this or we can just use a treat now and again just to create this kind of you-never-know-jackpot effect. Hey, what's this? In. Off you go. Clever boy. Okay. So far, so good. Well, let's swap places. You have a go. Okay. Dawn's been using the wrong tone of voice with Kobe. Now she needs to stick to a one word command and avoid anything too high pitched. In. Well, it worked. Good boy. Easy, right? Very easy. At this stage, easy. Who would have thought? Yeah. No. Brilliant. So you've taken control now. I like that feeling. <laughs> Bones is a Great Dane with grand designs. Yeah. As far as he's concerned, he's king of the castle. As he got bigger, the problem got bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of a one-man wrecking crew. At a colossal 12 stone, Bones does what he wants, when he wants. But the biggest problem with Bones is that he constantly demands attention from owner Wendy. Yes, you're closing off, chicken. And you just constantly pause, like, you know, give me attention, give me attention. And it's wreaking havoc with home life. Bones! No! 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 no. no. Oh. It's a bit of a challenge, really, because it's like a freeway relationship now. <laughs> he doesn't like us cuddling because he <laughs> wants to be in between us. <laughs> Get out! Come on, then. Mouth's sick. There you go. Mouth's sick. There yeah. we go. You just want your mum. You just want your mum. He loves me to a point that this, it's not healthy for him. Don't you dare. He literally has spread out his legs and physically moved <laughs> yes. me off the bed, and I'm not yes. the lightest bloke in the world. Get out. He doesn't want you. Get out. <laughs> out. Never felt so irrelevant in my life. 
Well, I think I'm at the right house because I can hear the dog from here. Shake your hand, you let go of the dog, won't you? Hello, Come on, you. In, in, Come in. on then. Come on, in. Right. Tell me about your problems then, Wendy. If people come, he will sit with me or between me because he right. wants to protect me. So, what about you and your husband then? Yeah, it's the same treatment. Right. Then, uh, like, if he tries to give me a cuddle, that he gets in between us. Yeah. Uh, anything like that, then, yeah, he, uh, he wants his mum. He wants his mum yeah. and he's pushing dad out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what's dad think to that? He's just used now. <laughs> He's, He's just... used to it. <laughs> yeah. So, right, right. You away, away. That worked. See, it's I've got a real authority when it comes to <laughs> comes to telling him to do things. Right, that's. I mean, you're you're kind of cuddling him when I'm saying away. Yeah, yeah. That's not. See, <laughs> see, there's not a gap there. There is now. What happens if you stop? Stroking him now. Do do nothing. Just humour me. And he does that. Now he's getting more insistent. So so hold it. Yeah, no, don't, don't, don't love him. Let's see what happens. Yeah. He just ups the ante, doesn't he? But don't love him. I'm most scared of him loving me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing about the way PZ starts off with all good intentions, but. Actually, he doesn't give you the impression he really means it. Meanwhile, Wendy just caves in and gives the dog love all the time at the wrong moment. It's a big problem when you look at the size of that dog and it's affecting their life. Stand up, Chewy, no! No, Chewy, come on, it's Norman! Three-year-old Chewy hates anyone coming anywhere near his family. As soon as somebody he doesn't see on a regular basis or doesn't know a delivery, anybody comes to the door, we have this every single time. He's like literally just watches, he's like a watchdog. Chewy, quiet. Chewy feels it's his role to protect them from anyone he sees as a threat. There's like a switch in him. Um, and I think if, if you didn't have a hold of him, I definitely think he would go for someone. <laughs> My biggest fear would be that he bites someone and then someone says he has to be put, put down. That is my ultimate fear. Hello. Hey. What's that? He's not happy, is he? Nice to meet you. Hi. 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 Is this come in? Carter and Aurelia. Carter and Aurelia. Hi. 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 Nice it's not long before Graham sees how Elaine deals with Chewie's reaction to strangers. When Chewy appears to have calmed down, is he let out of his cage? Chewy, they're gone! Look, they've gone! Chewy! They've gone! Gone! That's what we have when the yeah, door yeah. goes. And that's without someone even coming in the door. He's like Jekyll and Hyde dog, isn't he? He is, completely. Yeah. yeah. Total Jekyll and Hyde, yeah. yeah. Elaine thinks she's dealing with the issue by locking Chewie away in a cage, but all it's doing is reinforcing his belief that people who come to the door are bad. I noticed before when, when Chewie's barking and lunging at the window, you, you're behind him, so you're kind of trying to lead from behind, yep. which doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. really. So the, the thing to do is to get up and get between him and the window, so to block him, in effect, and then get him to move back. Yeah. If he tries to sidestep you, yeah. then you just need to keep your cool and go, I think so. Sounds good. Graham wants to show Elaine that by getting in between Chewie and what he perceives to be a threat, they're showing him that there is no danger and that they are in control. So he's arranged for someone to help by delivering parcels. Hey! No. Off! Good boy. Ah! Off. Boy. Using a firm command. Hey, off. 
And when Chewie calms, prays... Good boy! This setter quickly settles down. That's good. He kind of, yeah, stopped so much quicker than what I expected. He normally is like, rawr, rawr, and he'd go on and on and on. Yeah. But it was almost instantaneously that he just stopped. And the biggest difference is that block. There you go. No! No! Off. Off. Good boy. Man, that's it. No, and keep an eye on him. Well, that's good, look. Good boy. Yeah, don't rev him up. Nice and calm with your okay. praise. Yeah. Good boy. Well, he's not barking now, look. Well done. <laughs> Pretty much as quick as when I did. I know. <laughs> Good boy. Congratulations. You're in control of your dog. <laughs> <laughs> this wily whippet, Patterdale Cross, is a highly accomplished food thief. She's eating chicken carcass. She's eating a packet of croissants. She eats rice cakes, a packet of meringues. Sausages. Anything that's available, she will take. I know if I leave anything else, it just will not be there when I come back. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's an absolute nightmare because you've always got dogs under your feet. But there's a serious side to Pippa's food thieving ways. It's like a switch. She just completely goes berserk. Come on, come on. Come on, let me show you. Come out of the way. When it comes to food, she's a thief, so she'll pinch anything she finds. Right. And if you try and get it off her, she will really go for you. Yeah. I just worry that something maybe has happened to her when she was a pup where she wasn't getting fed properly or she had to fight for food or yeah. something like that. While they've been discussing the problem, Pippa's managed to pinch a packet of pastries. Right, here we go. Come here, come on, come on. As John dives in to rescue the remains, Graham gets to see how he handles the problem. Whoa, careful. All right, all right. Except it's not all right, is it? No, no, no. One of the difficulties that we've got is that she really only steals things when you're not in the room. Yeah. So how do you train a dog when you can't see what she's doing and you're not there to put a response in anyway? Yeah. Very different to the door. Well, I think I might have an answer. So I've got to set something up in your kitchen. Oh, OK. And I'll call you through when I'm ready. Is that all right? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Graham's got a plan to teach a simple no command using her favourite treat, with the help of a gadget. OK, guys, come on through. So the solution I've come up with, uh, with a bit of tech help, is this. <laughs> Doggy cam. The aim is to stop Pippa stealing in the first place, so there's no need for her to get aggressive. So I've got a camera and some sausages so we can watch Pippa in another room and see what she's doing. Now, I think the important thing is timing because if she gets all the way up here and has three out of the four sausages and then we try and tell her stop, exactly. nothing's going to stop her then. But if we can catch the moment when she goes, I think I'll just, you know, uh, no, then you're potentially on a winner. I want us to think at the end of it, that mum's got or dad's got eyes in the back of, of the heads. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> have a look. Somebody's left the door open. Right, watch. Let's have a look. Before Graham's even sat down, Pippa's tucking in. Yeah, we'll have to go there. Right. But will the no command work with food? No. No. Pippa. No. no. Pippa's managed to snatch three no. of the four sausages. Wait for it, wait for it. With one sausage left, it's vital she obeys. If she comes down, we praise her. Good girl, that's fine. Yeah. Good girl, Pip. If she's kind of looking at me going, I'm going to wait until you get bored and I'll have that sausage. And I'm looking <laughs> at her going, Pippa, darling, I could wait longer than you. It's a battle of wills. It's a breakthrough moment. Pippa's learnt that she'll get praise for obeying commands. 